Hi guys, welcome back to Behind the Sawdust, our weekly-ish vlog where we show you what goes on when the cameras are off here at the two Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal shops. Today's a big day. It's our monthly Cool Tools episode. These are our most popular Behind the Sawdust episodes because we give you a look at some of the cool tools that we use here at the Stumpy Nubs workshop. Today, we'll look at some safety equipment, a budget shop machine, and some workshop wearables. We'll also be giving away some stuff to a lucky viewer who just leaves a comment below, so stay tuned for details on that. I place links to all the things we're going to talk about in the notes below the video, so please use the links to learn more. Let's get started. First up is an inexpensive workshop accessory that's often taken for granted. This is a push block made by bench dogs. Now, I know what you're thinking. You already have push blocks like this. I used to have a whole box of them. But after I started using this version, I tossed my old ones. You wouldn't think that something as simple as a plastic push block could be improved on, but the bench dogs version is my favorite because of the material on the sole. The stuff is really grippy much better than the other ones I've used. That's important, because if you're cutting, for example, a rabbit in a plywood panel, you have to apply even downward pressure and push in two directions at the same time, through the blade and against the fence. Having a good grippy push block makes that process a lot easier and your joinery more accurate. It also pays to have one to grip wood on the jointer while keeping your hands safely away from the blades should something go awry. I also like the handles that are padded and comfortable to use. Of course, whenever I tell people about these, they always say, what about the gripper? The gripper is great, but it's six times the cost. These are like 10 bucks a piece if you buy them separately. But I didn't buy them separately. I bought mine in a kit that came with a push block, a feather board, and a push stick. I want to talk about the push stick for a minute. I love this thing, not just because it has this nice, big, comfortable handle, but because there's a super strong magnet embedded into the handle. So I can stick it on my table saw fence or the side of my saw and keep it out of the way when I'm not using it, and I'll know where it is when I need it later. It solved a serious problem for me because I was always misplacing my push stick before. And while we're on the subject of push sticks, there's one more I really like. This is a mini push stick. I like this one for when I have to get into a narrow space between the blade and the fence, but I especially like it because it fits in an apron pocket. So I have it handy when I need it at the bandsaw or the router table without having to walk back to the table saw to get one. Because if I have to walk back to the table saw, chances are I'm going to take a risk that I probably shouldn't take. I just think that the way that Bench Dogs has improved on these common workshop accessories is very clever and worth checking out. So I'll put a link below in the notes. Next up is a little more expensive tool, but the version I have is less expensive than others. This is the Harbor Freight Drill Press. Some people think Harbor Freight and everything in it is just junk. But as many woodworkers know, there are some really good buys if you know what to get. The drill presses are a great example. The one I have is a 13 inch floor standing model. It also comes in a bench top version. It has a three quarter horse motor and 16 speeds doesn't have a lot of frills, but it's been a reliable drill press for me for years. There are some things I don't like. I wish it was a little heavier at the base so it wouldn't rock as much, and that could be remedied if I would just bolt it to the floor or put some extra weight on it. Over the years, one of the handles has become a little loose. Threads inside have stripped out. I'll probably have to fix that eventually. And as most drill presses have, the table is a little bit small, but I made my own super duper XY drill press table to remedy that anyway. You can find a link to that in the notes below the video as well. I suppose if you're waiting for me to list a bunch of cool features, you're gonna be disappointed. Like I said, it's a no frills drill press, but the reason I'm showing it to you is because it only cost me 200 bucks because I waited till it was on sale and then I also used a coupon. That's an enormous bang for your buck. And I know people who have used these inexpensive import drill presses for years, and they just keep on going. My great-grandfather bought one in the early 80s, and it's still going strong in my dad's shop today. So if you've been wanting a drill press and don't have the budget for one of the high-end models, don't be too quick to dismiss these cheap imports. They have just about everything you're going to need for about a third of the price. It's one thing to have cool tools. It's another to look cool while you're using them. Hardworking shop clothing is as essential to getting the job done as anything else. Now, if you're a regular subscriber to Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, 
you know that Mustache Mike is a bit of a fashion icon in the woodworking world. His plaid shirts and suspenders have become legendary over the years. But what we wear on camera and what we wear when we're just working in the shop can sometimes be two different things. For quite some time, I've been wearing Wrangler's Riggs work pants, and I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes. But a while back, I discovered that Wrangler makes a whole line of Riggs workwear that includes pants, jeans, shirts, vests, jackets, you name it. So since I like the pants so much, I got my hands on some of the other clothing in the line to see if they were as nice. Mustache Mike and I have both been trying them out for a while, and I thought it'd be a good idea to give you two different perspectives, one from a handsome young craftsman like myself and the other from an older man with a mustache. So we're going to head over to the other workshop to talk fashion with Mustache Mike. So let's start at the bottoms. I'm wearing the Riggs Ranger pants and the stash is wearing the five pocket jeans. Actually, I've been trying out two different pairs of jeans. Uh, the first one has a technology that's called Cool Vantage and it's designed to wick away moisture uh, from your body. The other pair of jeans I've been trying out are the ones I have on right now. They're called Advanced Comfort. In fact, they even got a little spandex in them. Never thought I'd see you in spandex. It's only 1%, but it makes them very comfortable, easy to work in. I like them. They look like your fancy going out pants. Well, maybe, but they put a lot of work into these. They reinforce the stitching. And look at here, they even got a place for a measuring tape or something that's been reinforced in the pocket. Just good, tough overall jeans. Yeah, I feel the same way about the pants. I've been wearing the Riggs Carpenter's pants for quite a while because I like the ripstop fabric that's made out of it. It's very durable, but still light. But these are the Ranger pants, which have cargo pockets. We all know what cargo pockets are good for. What? They hold your stuff so you can concentrate on looking cool. You've never been cool. All right, let's move up to the shirts. I've worn the pants for quite a while, but the shirts are kind of a new thing for me. What do you think of yours? I love the shirt. You know me, old and cold, and I hate fluffy and puffy. These have a nice flannel lining which makes them lightweight and warm, easy to get around in. Yeah, I have a flannel shirt too, and I really like it, especially the snaps. All shirts should have snaps. I got time for buttons. How often do you uh, get out of your clothes that fast? What if there's a fire? You take off your clothes in a fire? I'm the one that's on fire. Right now I'm wearing one of their regular work shirts. It has like the same texture as the pants, but I think it's a cotton twill. It's not this ripstop material. What I really like about it though are the gussets under the arms. See that? Okay, I can see them. Well, they make it a lot easier to move around. That's kind of what I like about the Riggs workwear. All of it is just gives you a lot of freedom of movement, which is a pretty big deal for somebody that's packing on all this extra muscle on him. Do you want to see my armpit again? Oh, I see it the first time. I wear a lot of vests, so I got a hold of a couple of the Riggs Foreman vests to try out. You don't wear vests because you're really old, and so you're cold all the time. So you got one of these Ranger jackets. What do you think of that? I really like it. It has what's called the heat seeker lining. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it keeps me real warm and it's lightweight. Yeah, because you don't want something really bulky while you're working. Right. There is one thing I don't like about the vest, the high collar. I like a high collar on a coat because it keeps your neck warm, but if it's that cold out, I'm not going to be wearing a vest, I'm going to be wearing a coat. So I just kind of think it gets in the way. I thought high collars were cool. Yeah, it's not the 80s anymore. Overall, I really do like the vest. I especially like it for working outside. So what is your overall opinion of Wrangler's Riggs workwear? Durable and comfortable. Are you glad I turned you on to them? Absolutely. Well, maybe we should give some away. So if you'd like to leave just a comment below the video, we're going to pick someone randomly and we'll send you some Wrangler's Riggs workwear gear. Well, that about wraps things up for this edition of Behind the Sawdust. Be sure to check out all the links in the notes below the video so you can see more about the things we've talked about. And head over to StumpyNubs.com where you can check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, full of great tips, tricks, tutorials, all designed to make you a better woodworker. See you next time.